Thank you very much, Charles and Kyla. So I'm quite excited to present our uh, recent research work uh, jointly done at Zurich University of Applied Sciences and Ulm University. Uh, this work is about uh, integrating radial basis function networks uh, to convolutional neural networks and using them for computer vision. This research is uh, guided with my PhD advisor Friedhelm Schwenker from Ulm University and motivated by my uh, second PhD advisor Chilo Stalomon from Zurich University of Applied Sciences. So uh, the radial basis function neural networks are three layer uh, neural networks. They have been introduced first in 1988. For a given input feature vector in the forward pass, first we compute the distances of these uh, features to some cluster centers, which are encoded in the hidden layer. And afterwards we apply a activation function to these distances and then train a output weight in order that to uh, specify the classes. Radial basis function can also be used for regression. In this research, we adopted the training process of the RBFs and also uh, proposed an activation function in order that they can be integrated into CNNs. And as an advantage, we actually can learn a similarity distance metric and we could also interpret the decision, met, uh, the decision process of uh, the computer vision models using RBFs by looking at, at the clusters and distribution of the training and test samples around the clusters. The, you're welcome. And the related works uh, related to the RBF networks are divided into three categories. So some works are focusing on the training process there are different uh, type of training process, one, two, and three phase learning for RBFs. And here we actually combined uh, two phases of training the RBFs by combining supervised and unsupervised learning. There are several different activation functions proposed in the literature for RBF networks based on uh, different applications. And here we propose a quadratic fun function in order that we can have a completely linear uh, computational graph for efficient gradient flow for CNNs. And in terms of applications, CNNs are used uh, for classification, regression, and even function, mathematical function interpolation. So here uh, we present the first attempt of uh, using RBFs in conjunction with CNNs for computer vision. Um, here I explain the training process of radial basis networks. In the hidden layer, as I mentioned earlier, the cluster centers are encoded. Here you can see an unsupervised loss uh, inspired by k-means algorithm. The first sum shows uh, an average over the clusters and the second is aimed at minimizing the distance between uh, feature vectors and a cluster center. Traditionally, the feature space uh, used to be fixed for radial basis function networks, but in a, the architecture that we use it, we feed the embeddings of CNNs which are trained uh, during the training process. So the input features of the RBFs are not fixed anymore. Therefore, we include this loss function in the training in order that the cluster centers are updated during the training process of the RBF. Uh, networks and CNNs. Then we have to compute the distance. As you can see, the distance can be defined based on a distance metric. If we, uh, a distance metric could be Euclidean distance. If we train uh, the main diagonal of the co covariance metrics, then we end up with having a Mahalanobis distance and the entire covariance matrix can also be learned. And we can write it in terms of matrix multiplication, as you can see over here. Then we apply activations and at the end we can uh, estimate the ground truth label shown by Y by a multiplication of output weights and the activations. And initializing the clusters are basically the second phase of the optimization and the one phase training algorithm of RBF only up the, uh, only computes the weights of the output layer. Uh, 
And the third phase is fine tuning the model using gradient descent end to end. And in order to adapt the RBFs to CNNs, as we said, uh, we first uh, we connect the backbone of the CNNs via a fully connected layer to the RBFs. So in principle, we flatten the features and use a fully connected without any uh, type of activation here. So experimentally, I noticed that uh, RBFs don't uh, work very well with dropout. Therefore, this uh, layer is necessary. And since we have parameters both in the hidden layer and output layer, if we use the original feature space, we easily undergo overfitting. So a fully connected layer to convert the output of the CNNs into a lower dimensional space is necessary here. Afterwards, we have the computation of the distance using matrix multiplication. And our proposed uh, activation is just um, an addition and division by a constants which shows the width of the kernel and at the end during the optimization we uh, compute uh, we optimize the unsupervised loss and minimize it as i mentioned earlier and we will have a supervised loss which could be a normal softmax cross entropy or any type of other loss that we would like to optimize for classification or regression In this slide, I would like to uh, show you how the training process works in practice. For this slide, I used uh, the MNIST dataset and on right and left, you can see the two dimensional representation of first, the input of the RBF, which is the embeddings of the CNNs and the activations, after uh, the activations of the clusters, basically after computing the distance and applying the activation functions. On left, you can see that the unsupervised loss is more prominent, means that during the training process, the data samples are divided into clusters, which are not uh, corresponding to the uh, ground truth labels. On right, uh, the other loss is more prominent, means a supervised loss, and you can see that the data samples are dividing into clusters during the training process based on the ground truth labels. In the middle figure, I uh, demonstrated the samples around a cluster center, so you can imagine that the center of the cluster is at zero and zero, then the training samples are distributed with a random angle based on their distance to the center of this cluster. Here is where both uh, losses interact. The unsupervised loss tries to bring all the samples to the close, as close as possible to the center, as I explained earlier. And the uh, supervised loss tries to put the samples from the same classes at the same and with the same space from the cluster center. So th this is why you can see some circles with the samples uh, from same classes around this cluster. And this process continues during the uh, training of the uh, CNN and RBF architecture. Furthermore, um, we used some uh, benchmark computer vision data sets in order to confirm that uh, this architecture can work for more complicated uh, problems. Though we noticed that uh, picking the correct set of hyperparameter, including number of clusters, as well as the uh, dimensionality of the input and uh, dimensionality of the RBF is not uh, all the time trivial, so we had to use the Vaden biases toolbox in order to have a hyperparameter search. And we also use the auto augment for augmenting our images to improve the performance. So at the end, we noticed that the radial basis function networks can work with a wide range of uh, 
CNN backbones such as efficient net uh, and networks, including inception blocks as well as residual connections. Though there is a small gap between our, the performances that we can achieve using RBFs on the top of CNNs and the state of the art, which is actually due to the overfitting. So we noticed that the training uh, data set can be learned very well, but uh, we need to have novel methods for regularizing, regularizing, regularization of the RBFs. At the end, uh, the metric that we learn based on the architecture of the RBFs can be used to find similar and dissimilar images. You can see that we apply it to the PET data set, the data set of aircrafts, uh, as well as birds. And we can take a look at the position of the test images and uh, corresponding uh, closer train images around every cluster. This is not necessarily at the moment interpretable based on the ground truth label, since uh, as I visualized in the training process as well, the uh, these clusters are learned completely unsupervised and they are not necessarily, uh, the position of the samples are necess not necessarily relate to their uh, labels. At the end, we had to modify the uh, activation of the RBFs as well as its training process in order to integrate it into CNNs. We have comparable results with the state of the arts, but there is still a gap and uh, the RBFs provide us with the opportunity to have a more interpretable uh, methods and decision-making process. So maybe one of the most uh, important um, questions to, for further investigation would be that uh, the regularization techniques for RBF in order to fill the gap between our performances and the state of the art. Thank you very much for your attention and uh, I'm very willing to hear your questions. Great, so if folks have questions either on YouTube or on Zoom, type them into your respective live chats and we'll, we'll pass them on to Mohamed Reza. So uh, my first question was a little bit about the sort of readout layer on these things. Yeah. So you said that you could use either a cross entropy loss or something else. Um, so could you talk a little bit more about those choices and how, they're, how you implement them or how you use them? Yeah, I mean, the output layer is actually very similar to the uh, normal output layers that uh, we kind of have for normal CNN. So depending on uh, the task that you have, you can also use mean square error as well for regression, for instance. So any type of loss function which can be used uh, in conjunction with CNNs can be used with this architecture as well. I see. So the output isn't necessarily those locations of those cluster centers um, that you were showing. That's not the final output layer of the network? No, like the output layer exactly has uh, the same structure as the output of the CNN. So it has uh, the same number as the number of classes. And uh, in principle, the training process is very the same. I see. So then what you were showing were those was the hidden layer of the RBF. Those were those cluster locations you were showing. Yeah, exactly. So this is basically the activation and not the output layer. So mm -hmm. I uh, visualized the, the activations. I see. Yeah. So I'm just, uh, one reason I'm asking about that is I know folks have looked into ways to do classification that don't use softmax because various issues like the calibration of the softmax layer can be very difficult. It can be difficult to motivate why we're using a softmax in the first place. Uh, so it seems like those cluster centers that you have have a natural interpretation as, you know, as basically class labels, right? Which cluster it is closest to. So is that a way that you can um, sort of uh, train these networks or validate these networks? Or is that, is it important to include that, that readout and software? 
Yeah, actually, uh, that's definitely true. So uh, besides unsupervised uh, initialization of the clusters, we can also do it uh, super based on supervised methods. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, uh, the way that we, we completely use unsupervised learning on these clusters. But in principle, you can divide your classes into subclasses or super classes even, and then you don't need the softmax layer at the end as well. So it's possible to just finish the network in the cluster level as well. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and so you mentioned the, uh, your interest in explainability and interpretable mm -hmm. AI. So are there, um, uh, what are some of the ways that you see this as being directly, um, uh, directly enabling greater explainability for CNNs relative to the baseline? So I would say as soon as we have these supervised clusters, we will have a much better interpretability because at the moment, like the clusters doesn't really uh, show anything interpretable based on common sense knowledge of humans. But in principle, we can divide uh, every class into subclusters or even into super classes and then we can kind of interpret how uh, where these test sample really goes and interpret these based on the ground truth labels and uh, subcategories of course i see so it gives you maybe a little bit more insight into that last bit of the cnn before the readout layer the, exactly. like the sort of enforcing this unsupervised yeah. learning stuff yeah that's true Cool. Um, all right. Well, thanks for thanks for answering those questions. Uh, and it looks like oh, we've got one from Han Lee here. Yeah. Um, so let me uh, read it out to you. So, how does the latent space transform between the latent space output of the CNN backbone versus afterwards? Right. So, what like how does that? I guess he wants a little bit of a of insight into what changes about that last layer of the CNN and what comes out of your RBF network. All right, I think it's basically uh, just about how we can visualize the decision making. So uh, I would say these uh, cluster centers work as support points and we kind of can explain uh, the, like the transformation of the CNN ends based on these uh, support points. So at the moment, since we do it completely unsupervised, they don't say anything about any kind of uh, human interpretable concept. But as soon as we uh, involve the ground truth labels into learning the clusters, then you can basically see the network made this decision because it's close to uh, cluster center A, which contains a specific attribute of the image. I see, yeah. That's um, that's interesting, um, and I guess one last one last question for me. Um, so, how immediately extensible is this idea to other kinds of so, like stacking it on the end of a fully a network that's fully connected, or a recurrent network on its readout layer, or a, you know some other kind of network? Is there an immediate way to translate from the work you've done to that, or is that another project? Yeah. I would say that with uh, some reasonable effort, it could be possible to integrate RBFs as the configuration that we proposed here to other types of networks. And I mean, LSTMs or recurrent networks are a little bit tricky to train, but I still think that uh, the model that we have is uh, basically ready for plug and play to any type of deep learning method. Cool. But I would say the challenge would be to somewhat have a hyperparameter search as well as a regularization for sure. So maybe at the very beginning, it takes some time to reproduce the same performance with more interpretability. Mm. Mm. Yeah, no free lunch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, um, it's very, very late at night slash early in the morning in Switzerland. <laughs> so we'll let you go. Thanks for presenting your research. So uh, thank you very much for your interest and amazing questions. It was great to be with you. Mm -hmm. And thanks a lot for your invite. Yep. Take care. Right. So thank you very much.